Hey everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the game environment uh, that I used to create this Pokemon Battle Arena. So as you'll see here I have this skybox in the background and how I did that is that if I come over here to window and I go into lighting and then uh, I could uh, apply a skybox but honestly if you download this Sky 5X which again isn't my own but it's on the Unity Asset Store and you just drag and drop a skybox in uh, that skybox will be reflected in there, but I'm going to keep it uh, to the one I had. I also, you'll notice, have this cloth component. Um, if I could find, here's like a cloth component. Uh, now, you won't see it blowing when I actually hit play, because there were some things where it was just spinning around the flagpole. So I need to uh, modify some more constraints and maybe put a collider or two in there uh, to give it some accurate flag simulation. But you get the idea, and this makes it really easy. You could actually see how to set one up where you set up an empty game object and attach cloth to it. And then you could actually attach a mesh by going here and selecting the mesh you want to add. Uh, and here, uh, what I did was I made a terrain object. And then I painted uh, textures on top of my terrain object. And so if I go here to terrain battlefield, that's my terrain. And then what I did was I just basically layered some textures. I layered some sand, and these are all uh, these textures were found in the uh, standard assets in Unity, uh, in terrain assets, surface textures. Uh, so I believe what I jumped in here with was the cliff, and then I went in with the sand a little bit, or or it might have actually been glass uh, grass rock, and then I jumped in with the sand and and layered that. And you'll see some opacity transition here. Uh, what I did was I set the sand to, to like a 50 or 40% opacity and I just brushed it in on the edges so that it looked like there was a fading transition between the two textures. I also dropped in uh, water here. That's also a part of my standard assets. If I come here to water uh, and I go to prefabs, you'll notice I could just drag in and drop water. So that's daytime water. I used nighttime water uh, and then I just scaled it up for my environment. And you'll also notice something really cool is that just if I, if I just go here and you look at it from this angle, it looks like that water, almost like it's a horizon line. You know, so it really makes it look like an accurate uh, simulation. Uh, for the terrain height, you'll actually notice that there are um, things here, brushes here you could use. You select either razor lower terrain or paint the height. Uh, and then you just choose like this type of brush and that's how I got that effect where I was able to paint in uh, those plateaus there. Um, then I would smooth, I could smooth height out if I want. You'll notice that uh, along this edge here. You'll notice I smoothed all this height out. You'll notice because it's not jagged like this. Uh, it's smoothed out. So I wanted to trans make a transitional look. And uh, we have some terrain under the water here. So what I really did was I layered the terrain in the water. Uh, so it came together as one cohesive battlefield. So that when I hit play and, uh, you know, so this is just playing the actual, you know, th this one scene. So there's not going to be any summoning of Pokemon. It'll show Pokemon, but Pokemon's not going to come out because we just, we didn't do any uh, team choosing before this, which it's reliant upon. But if you notice, just take a look at the environment here. Notice how the lights are uh, hitting the objects. Uh, you'll see these different textures up close, actually in game and engine. You'll see the waves back here on the water. You'll notice the skybox and that the lights from the stars is reflecting into that water there. Um, so each uh, component element, just disregards, these are the buttons that if, if I was going to choose the attacks. But like I said, you have to play these scenes in sequence in order for a Pokemon to be summoned. So you'd start at the start screen, and then you'd move on to the, to the choose your team, so on and so forth. Uh, you'd at least have to choose your team before you before this scene was loaded. Um, but that's basically how I did that. So you could start sculpting your own terrain. And one mini project, uh, if you're following this along with this tutorial and you're working through it, I'd like to recommend that perhaps one mini project, aside, I had mentioned adding in your own Pokemon, perhaps adding in your own battlefield. Uh, you know, create your own terrain and maybe make a forest battlefield. Unity has a lot of uh, standard assets with like trees and stuff. Uh, here, speed tree. And would you you would go in and you could see if I like dragged one of these, if I can, yeah, if I could just drag that there, you'll see it also has its cust a custom rig setup and stuff that you know automatically uh, comes with it. And basically, if I dropped in a wind zone, from up here to game object, 3D object, wind zone, uh, I could actually make uh, it look like it's windy and the trees moving. So some really cool stuff you could play around with. I recommend you get to know Unity's environment assets really well. Download some free stuff from the Asset Store. Download the Standard Asset uh, Environment Package by coming up here to going to Asset, Import Package, Environment. And play around with the water. And I recommend creating one or two uh, battle levels. Um, and you could even make, if you want to go a step further, instead of this Choose um, 
So in this scene here, you could choose your team, right? You could choose your Pokemon. Uh, you should maybe mimic this, and if you really have a lot of time on your hands and want to get to know Unity really well, make a choose your level screen. And the same sort of script would apply, you know, you'd have to change it a little bit. But basically, let's say you had three levels, you can mouse over a level, right? So like these Pokemon, you'd mouse over a level and you could, uh, you'd could, you have an indicator there. And then you select which level you want to play under. So, it, you know, that, that could be something exciting that you could do. So again, I just wanted to provide this to you. I know it's not working 100%, like in terms of the full battle after Pokemon Faint and stuff. But I wanted to provide this to you as a starting point for people learning Unity. Uh, you know, sooner rather than later, so that you could take it, take what I've done, start working with it. It's at the point now where you could start working with it, and if you don't have enough Unity experience, you could learn as you go. You won't just have to start from scratch. But it's also at the point where if you know more of what you're doing, you could fix up some of these things really quick, and you could make your own complex game out of it. You could probably have, like, easily... 15 Pokemon to choose from and stuff like that depending on how good of a, you know how fast you can model Pokemon and stuff and if you work with this for a month or two uh, you know doing some sort of tutorial like this to really increase your skills uh, it could really help you out so I'm hoping you enjoy and I'm hoping you found some of these tutorial videos helpful so far and uh, I look forward to continue uh, uh, continuing to share uh, some more tips and tricks within this tutorial